So um, this is a question corner video. So this is question corner number 15 and this is for Hiroki Matsuchi. So um, Hiroki Matsuchi is a really cool guy. Um, he does the Bridges podcast and um, a whole bunch of different podcasts actually. Um, but I'll put the links to all that below. Um, he also has a Twitter account that he's pretty active on. Um, so, <laughs> you should definitely go check them out, and especially if you're interested in like Jap Japanese bloggers and vloggers and things like that, because he does spotlight a lot of them, and if you want to find out some more new vloggers out there, he's the guy to go to. Um, so yeah, he asked me, um, I was wondering what you found to be the most aggravating aspect of life in Japan thus far. On the flip side, what negative preconceptions about Japan turned out to be non-issues or things that were pleasantly surprising? So, <laughs> um, I did think long and hard about this question. This is probably one of the one of the most difficult questions I've gotten. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. So I, I I really do like thinking about these. So yeah, the most aggravating part about living in Japan is that Japanese culture is really stubborn, and I'm really stubborn. <laughs> so. That's saying a lot. Like, I'm a slave to routine. I'm really, really stubborn. But if someone comes up to me with, like, you know, a reason why another way of doing something is better, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know. But Japanese culture is not that way at all. Um, yeah, at least from my experience. Um, and one part that, like, about that, like, uh, related to that, that really bugs me is that the buildings here are really inefficient. Um, buildings are really, really drafty, they don't have very much insulation, if at all. Um, they say it's for earthquake safety. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but, I mean, insulation is really cheap. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know why. Um, like, for an example, like, if my room were 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and I turned my heater off for an hour to, like, save some energy, my room would be 60 degrees in an hour. And that would, like, not happen in my house in New Jersey. Like, we don't have the heat on all day, like, when people are at work and school and stuff, and we only have it on at night. And when we get there in the afternoon, it's still only, like, 60 degrees inside. <laughs> you know, like, after not being on all day. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of weird to me that it's, like, in an hour it goes down to 10 degrees. And when I wake up in the morning, my room is always about 10 degrees hotter than it is outside. Um, so the summer, it's really, really, really hot in here. And in the winter, it's really, really cold in here, um, which is really strange. And if it's windy outside, the temperature changes even faster. <laughs> um, so that kind of sucks. And the school buildings themselves, I mean, the one I work in is, like, really old. So, I mean, I don't know what it's like in newer buildings, but... It's basically outside, like the teacher's room has heat, and um, since January, the students have had a heater, one small heater in their room, in their um, classroom, but they can only use it with the homeroom teacher's permission, so if like the other teachers who are going to that classroom don't have the permission from the homeroom teacher, no one can use the heater. <laughs> so yeah, it's often really, really, really cold, and I think it's really difficult for children to study if they're like freezing and can like hardly write anything with their like hands they're shaking. It's really sad to watch them. Um, and that's really strange for me coming from New Jersey and there's heat in the school. <laughs> you know, like it's warm. Like we're never like freezing cold. Um, except like during gym class if we happen to go outside. But <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just really weird and inefficient to me. Like you think like, there's so many things about Japanese life that are, like, really, in a, like, they're really, really efficient. And to have something that is so economically inefficient, to have, like, really drafty buildings and houses, it's really, really inefficient. And I've talked to people that I work with about this, and they're, like, so shocked and surprised that, like, Americans are not freezing most of the time during the winter. And, like, and I'm like, well, you know, why don't, you guys put insulation in their buildings and they're like, I don't know. It's always been that way. Like, what? What? I mean, people used to live in caves, you know, until they built houses. Like, that's not an excuse. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Alright. 
it's just, it really, really aggravates me. Um, but, I mean, there's so many wonderful parts about Japan that yeah, outweigh this, but yeah. <laughs> it's something that you wouldn't really think about or wouldn't really bother you until you actually come here. Um, yeah, so on the flip side, um, some negative preconceptions that um, are not issues or things that are pleasantly surprising. I mean, I never really felt this way, but a lot of people that I know assume that Japanese people are like really, really, really straight-laced, only care about studying and working and like work all the time. And there are Japanese people that are like that, but there are Americans like that too. <laughs> You know, like, it's just like a personality trait that people have. And most Japanese people I've met are, like, really, really fun and charismatic and funny and outgoing and um, completely, completely, completely the opposite of what a lot of Americans would expect. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, from what people have told me, the Kansai area is more, like, filled with more outgoing people than elsewhere, but... I don't know if that's just what they feel is true about their area or not. I don't know. I haven't really been too far out of the Kansai area, so yeah, I don't really know. But that's definitely something that I found to be pleasantly surprising, I guess. Pleasantly surprising. Oh my eyes are so dry! Another like negative preconception is that like Japanese people eat dolphin and whale all the time, and they don't! Like. <laughs> They really, really don't. And, like, I knew that before I went because I'm interested in Japan and, like, you know, I looked up these things. But a lot of Americans I know, like, assume that, like, that's what they eat all the time. Because, like, that's what they talk about on the news. Like, oh, another Japanese ship was caught, like, catching whales. And, like, it's completely wrong. <laughs> I mean, yes, they do. But it's, like, extremely, extremely expensive to eat those things. And it's, like, something that they would do once in their lifetime, if at all. So yeah, that's definitely a negative preconception that is different and a non-issue in most of Japanese society. So, um, once again, thank you Hiroki, and um, please check him out if you haven't already. Um, he's a really, really great guy, and um, makes really, really, really awesome, informative podcasts um, that you should go listen to. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so um, that's it for Question Corner 15, and if you have any other questions for the Question Corner, please put them in the comments below, and um, I'll try to respond to you in the comments and maybe even make a video. Um, so yeah, bye! Have a nice weekend! <laughs>